Hi everybody, this is Nick. I wanna take you through a quick chart makeover from the very start that you would see in Excel, your data table, and we're gonna walk through some of the defaults in Excel and uh, some of the little design tweaks that you're gonna to do to make sure that your chart is really good. Now, this isn't gonna be a click-by-click -click tutorial. It's more kind of a high-level concept of starting from square, square one all the way to a nice-looking chart, but you can find all of these tips and tricks, how to create uh, these charts, how to push those buttons right here on my YouTube channel, so I hope you will subscribe. So this is uh, some data that we have a select all that apply question from a visitor experience survey at a zoo. This is how the data would look like summarized in a data table in Excel. I'm gonna go ahead and highlight it and create a chart. The first one that I kind of uh, know to create is just this column chart here. That's very common, I've seen it lots of times. But we can see we already have some issues here. Namely, some of that text down there is, is kind of cut off with those three ellipses. We have some elements here that we don't need, so let's go through and remove some of the things. So the first thing that we can do is we can remove the chart border. We don't need a chart border on these things, it's visually distracting and let's just uh, give it this sort of uh, impression that it's floating there on the slide it looks a lot cleaner much more professional then we're gonna go ahead and get rid of the grid lines we don't really need those grid lines especially because later on in this video I'm gonna add direct labels to those bars so you only want to keep the grid lines there if you don't have direct labels on each of your bars because then people will be able to estimate across the row but in this case I'm gonna add direct labels to my bars, so we don't need the grid lines it's another example of visual clutter Let's go ahead and remove the legend. For some reason, Excel always defaults to giving me a legend even when I don't have any other legend categories than this one series of bars. So we don't need a legend uh, on this chart. So we're just gonna go ahead and remove it. The next thing we wanna do is again, add those direct labels. Now you can really see each of the different label points perfect right there on the chart. Because I added direct labels, I don't need a, hor a vertical axis, a, a Y axis anymore over there on the left. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove that axis, just delete it. Then. The biggest thing, so this is the biggest switch that we need anytime you have a chart that has 45 degree text along that uh, horizontal axis or that X axis, let's go ahead and switch it from a column chart, a vertical column chart to a horizontal bar chart. Now I don't have to crane my neck to read that text, I can read it right down the list. Now the other thing that we need to do to a chart like this is do some intentional sorting. So you can see right here, this is just how my uh, data was listed in uh, probably on the survey and that's how it was, it was exported in Excel. Uh, but that's a really big rookie mistake. So once you have this, a chart like this, and you have lots of uh, zigzagged lines or bars right there, let's go ahead and sort it from greatest to least if those categories don't have an intentional sort order already to them, like an ordinal order or some other um, you know kind of distinction between uh, each of those bars. So let's go ahead and just sort that from greatest to least. Now, as a reader, I know exactly what's the top and what's the bottom. It's very, very easy for me to discern that. The other thing we're going to do is make the title much bigger and we're going to left align it because we always know uh, that most of us uh, here in the United States, we're reading left to right. And so we want to make sure that everything, the most important thing kind of starts in that upper left hand corner. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. But you can see that the title is still uh, probably the name of uh, what the survey question was. I want the title to be something more of a takeaway, some sort of statement about the data that we have here. And so I'm going to make that later on. But before that, I'm going to first remove uh, some of that gap, the gap width or the white space between the bars. We're going to make it nice and thick. That kind of saturates the page. It puts more data on the page for me. And my eyes are really drawn to that right there. And and then we're gonna do, we're gonna move those labels from outside of the bars to the inside of the bars. And I think that's a really nice touch, especially when you have bars that are long enough to accommodate those inside labels. They look really nice that way. And it's very appealing, visually appealing to that eye. And now the final thing, we're gonna make that title ta a takeaway. So watching active animals was the experience that most guests said was especially memorable to them during their visit. If I was a reader and I didn't even look at the chart, I should be able to read that title and take something away from the chart. Now the other thing that you might wanna do is consider a different kind of chart type. So for a select all that apply question like this, you could use a, a bar chart like this, but you could also use a framed bar chart, which is a, a chart that I just love to use um, in Excel. And you can make it so simply in Excel right here. It's a really great chart type to use. It gives a visual nod to your reader that every single one of these items could have been selected by 100% of visitors, but it obviously was not. So how you make this in Excel, here's a little screen recording. This is how the data is set up or the data are set up, you're gonna have your items here on the left, we're gonna have a spacing column right here, all set to 100%, and then your data. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna highlight the selection, we will insert a, a traditional, a 2D clustered bar chart, 
just like you normally would right here from this drop down list. Now I'm gonna do some adjustment to the chart area just to make it a little bit bigger so that we can see it. But you can see here that Excel always uh, defaults that uh, y, that <laughs> x-axis to 120%. We need to go and update that to 100%. So I'm gonna format the axis right there. The maximum will be 100%. And now what we're gonna do is just do some little formatting tweaks here and there. We're gonna get rid of those grid lines. I will get rid of that uh, x-axis. We're gonna get rid of the legend we don't need that and then I'm gonna get rid of that title because I'm gonna add that title back in as a text box usually on my PowerPoint slide here's my data bars I'm gonna go ahead and update update that color to a blue here are my uh, spacing bars and I'm gonna add that to gray I'm gonna make that gray and now I'm gonna set the overlap from 0% to 100% which will overlap the bars and create this really cool framed bar chart effect kind of a racer bar effect we'll go ahead and reduce the gap width make it nice and big and then you can go ahead and you can just do some more formatting to your chart add your data labels, things like that. It's a really great little chart trick, a framed bar chart. And we have a couple videos on how to make those framed bar charts too, if you didn't want to follow along with this one. So here's the before and after. Before is the default. And there is on the right uh, is the framed bar chart that I think is such a, a much better visual treatment for this kind of data. So if you like this video, please go ahead and give it a thumbs up. We'll make more makeovers like this. If you like them, hit the subscribe button and the bell next to it. You'll get notified every time I post a new video in data design, usually Excel, PowerPoint, or Word. Hope you had a great time watching, had a great time making this for you, and I can't wait to see you all next time.